have a new mirror, as you can see. I haven't unwrapped it yet. And I will show you the reason why I have a new mirror. God knows how much bad luck I'm gonna get for this <laughs> this year. But yeah, had a bit of an incident with the full length mirror and the robot hoover. And what you see here is bags of shattered mirror. I'll insert a photo of the crime scene here. But basically the bumpers or the sensors on my, the specific robot hoover that I have aren't that great. And it does have a tendency to hit things and it doesn't have, it's not an expensive one. So it doesn't have the technology to kind of remember and map out rooms. But for the most part, when it bumps into things, it, it's fine because everything is quite heavy, you know, like tables and chairs, but it must've just like bumped the mirror at the correct angle or just bumped it really hard and sent the mirror flying. Honestly, the, the crash was so loud I thought maybe something awful had happened outside or maybe the wind had blown something over. So I went rushing into the front room so I could look out the window and check everything was all right and was greeted with the mirror flat on the floor, shattered into about a million pieces and the hoover stuck underneath it, just like spinning around, having an absolute fit, just going because obviously I had no idea what was going on. Um, annoyingly, the little shit was completely unscathed. I kind of wanted it to have at least been punished or like got a crack in it or something um and ironically i had to pull it out of all the mess so that it could then hoover up the mess that it made so yeah that's the story as to why i have had to buy a new mirror it's the ikea hovet one it's that really big one that has the aluminium frame so really easy to get replaced luckily it's not it wasn't a you know a lovely antique mirror or like a vintage one or something that was really hard to find fairly inexpensive, thankfully, um, and Ikea managed to deliver a new one in like four to five days. So yeah, that was um, a fun event that happened last week. Today is food shop day. <laughs> I really do not enjoy food shopping. Um, it is a task that I try and avoid as best as possible, but um, sadly it's just one of, it's one of those things that has to be done. I have, however, managed to avoid doing large food shops for about four weeks now because yeah, but like about a month ago, I signed up to HelloFresh, which I would not recommend to anyone. Um, it, I did it out of laziness and out of lack of enthusiasm for cooking. And I do actually quite enjoy those sort of cooking subscription services because they do make cooking really straightforward. It's gen generally, it's quite quick. Um, and at the end of it, you are, you do have quite a lot of recipe cards that you can refer back to each week when you're picking meals. However, it is extremely, extremely expensive and I do not think it is good value for money whatsoever. I must have, um, I had a discount code for the first couple of boxes and didn't properly check how much it would be once the discount codes had expired. And then I was on my account last week, picking up my meals for the week and realized I was paying over 40 pounds a week for three meals, which, I mean, if you went to the supermarket with £40, you'd be able to get a lot more than just three meals for the week. And they're not exactly exciting meals either. They're, I mean, they're nice, but I wouldn't, like, I don't get overly excited about them. So I swiftly cancelled that because I couldn't believe, I think it was close to maybe even £45, and I couldn't believe that HelloFresh were charging that much. Um, they really do draw you in with the discount codes, and then you sort of forget that actually after the discount code, you're going to be paying such a ludicrous amount of money um, for three meals. So yeah, that's that done. And I thought, do you know what? I just need to actually look through the cookbooks that I have because I've got some really good cookbooks that are full of really good recipes. I just need to find the recipes that are correct for my style of cooking. I got a new cookbook a couple of days ago. It's the new Anna Jones book, One Pot Pan Planet. I do have her other book, which is, um, is it called something like the modern cook's year or the modern year of cooking. It's that really big wedge of a book that spans over four seasons. It's absolutely beautiful. The imagery is so nice and it's full of great recipes. However, I do think the recipes in there are best suited for people who really enjoy cooking and really enjoy putting in the time and the effort to cook. Whereas I'm a much more of a fuss-free, speedy cooker. So I think this one's gonna be a lot better suited to my um, preferences. I've just been flicking through as I write my shopping list. <sighs> I The reason I don't like food shopping is because, I, so I can't drive. It was a goal. Was it last year I set that goal? 
or maybe it was for this year. Anyway, I haven't managed to achieve the goal due to lockdown, obviously. Um, so I have to walk to the supermarket, um, which is fine because it's not far, but it's more the fact that I can't carry an entire week's worth of shopping on me alone. So I have to do my food shopping like two separate trips. I kind of do half and half. So I get halfway through the week and then I do the next half. Anyway, um, the, the whole point of me sat here talking about this is because I was thinking this week, I am going to try and do a sort of what I eat in a week video or maybe a, a week in food. Rather than a week in outfits, I've got a week in food video idea in my head. I won't be documenting everything I eat every single day because we'd be here forever. Like I'm not gonna document breakfast, lunch and dinner every single day. What I think I will do is document one meal from each day that I think has been interesting or that I have enjoyed. So one day it might be dinner, the next day it might be breakfast. To be honest, at the moment I eat a similar thing every day for lunch. So I'll probably feature my lunch less so, but yeah, I thought that might be of interest because actually, surprisingly, it's something that gets requested quite often, which I say surprisingly because it's not necessarily content I would enjoy watching, but I think that is because I don't have a great relationship with cooking. I don't particularly enjoy it. However, I think if you liked cooking or you're in a bit of a rut with what you're eating at the moment, it could be of interest and I get why it's of interest. It's quite a big thing in vlogging, isn't it? What I eat in a week. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try that. Something new, something I haven't tried before. So I don't think I'm gonna exclusively cook from this book though, although I am very tempted to because I have already bookmarked so many recipes and I'm only about halfway through flicking through the book. I'll do a variation of this. To be honest, a little sneaky takeaway will probably end up happening towards the end of the week as well. Um, and I will, uh, I have a tendency to at least go out like once a week for lunch as well. So yeah, let's just see how this goes. Today I've decided to have this carrot and peanut nasi goreng, which is from the One Pot Pan Planet book. I was actually going to have this for dinner tonight, but I really fancy a hot big lunch, so I'll probably have this and then something a lot smaller for dinner. made this like it looks incredible um i guess that's what happens when you use nice fancy cookbooks that was 10 out of 10 would definitely recommend and i'm not just saying that because i made it or i'm vlogging it i genuinely did really really enjoy that and it was now that i'm looking back on it although it felt chaotic because i didn't prep very well and i'm not very good with new recipes i always feel a bit chaotic at first it was actually quite simple and straightforward and I think as I familiarise myself with that recipe and repeatedly cook it, it'll get to the point where I can just do it off the top of my head um, and start swapping out different proteins and different veg, but that was so tasty, so filling. My only regret is that I didn't put an extra fried egg on top. I could have definitely had two fried eggs. I've just started using this very nice sort of woven leather tote bag from St Agni as my sort of bag that I take to the shops when I know I'm not going to buy a lot. So like today I just need to go and get some spices and some cheese and some other little bits for my lunch. Um, and it's a really, like the, the length of the, I would show you my mirror but I haven't actually unwrapped the mirror yet. So maybe if I pop you on something, nope, nope, maybe if I pop you here, 
that might work. Yeah, the length of the um, straps is really good because they're not hugely long, um, but they're not short. They're that really nice in between. If you're short like me, sometimes with tote bags, the uh, straps can be a little bit too long. So it kind of sits at this really awkward bit, kind of like below the hip. Um, so this is actually really nice that it sort of sits right on my hip. Um, but annoyingly, like this bag hopefully is still in stock for those of you who are interested, but I've had it for quite a while and I'm not that great at showing new things when I get them immediately. I kind of show them two months down the line and they're gone. I just started making my lunch and I thought actually this one might be an interesting one to show you because it's super easy, super quick. It's that, I'm basically doing a toasted tortilla sandwich thing. It's that technique where you split the tortilla into four sections, pile it up with ingredients, make a little cut and then fold it over and toast it. Um, I saw it on TikTok ages ago and I would say I probably do this about two to three times a week at the moment just because it is so easy, so quick and it's such a great way to get a lot of ingredients into one thing. So my go-to when I usually do it is aioli, some sort of garlic aioli as the base and then I'll have tomatoes, mozzarella, avocado, some chicken or maybe if I don't want chicken I'll put falafel in and then red onion for a bit of crunch because it is quite a, uh, there's a lot of soft textures in it so it can be quite squidgy so I put the onion in there to add a little bit of crunch but I'll show you it once I've kind of like put all the ingredients on top. Usually I'd have basil on this as well, but I completely forgot to buy it. So today I've got avocado, chicken, tomato, mozzarella, and I sprinkled red onions all around. It probably looks like I've been really stingy with each of the ingredients, but once you fold it up, it actually becomes quite a big chunk. So you have to be careful to not overfill it. Otherwise, then when you go to toast it, all the ingredients fall out. Um, so actually, once I get this folded up, you'll see it's it's quite it'll be quite a big wedge. I just went to start vlogging and realised I still have the wreath up on my mirror, and it's almost the end of March. Um. I should really take that down. I can't believe I've not noticed that and I've only just noticed it in the view of the vlog camera. God, that lunch was good. It It's so simple, um, but I love stuff like that. I did come on here to actually say something and I can't remember what it was now. Completely lost my train of thought. Um, but I've started to unwrap the mirror, which is very exciting. Um, and now I've just got really quite dull errands to do, like go to the post office and things like that. Um, so I shall see you all later. so good. I used to be a massive breakfast person. I loved making beautiful porridges and baked eggs and all that kind of stuff, but I sleep in quite a lot now, most days pretty much. I blame the pandemic. I don't really wake up, well, I don't get out of bed any earlier than half past eight, and I just don't have the appetite for big breakfast anymore. I kind of wake up and then I potter around, so I kind of like to make myself a, what I call a breakfast meze, snack meze, just so I can snack on this while I'm pottering around. Um, and then this kind of just sustains me until lunch and that's when I have a much bigger meal. Um, I do often think, oh, it'd probably be better if I have the bigger meal first and then a smaller lunch. But like I said, I just don't have the appetite for it anymore. Um, and I think it is due to just waking up a lot later at the moment. So it is usually just rice cakes with some sort of nut butter on and then I'll have some fruit on the side. Today I had an orange and I'll probably also have an apple. Something I have introduced into my breakfast routine though that I'm really, really enjoying is a 
a matcha latte. Now, I don't drink coffee, so in the morning it is usually a pint of water or a lemon and ginger. But I've always liked the idea of having something very wholesome and warm and creamy in the mornings to start my day. So I've been trying to make matcha lattes and I think I've finally got a nice ratio that I really like. And I just love the ritual of it. I love making it and then I love sitting down and just enjoying it properly for 20 minutes. I'll either be reading a book or maybe just watch a little bit of TV or just literally just sit, maybe looking out the window, just enjoying it. And I love it so, so much. I really, really look forward to doing this every morning now. Um, but like I don't, previous to this, like I said, I don't drink coffee. So caffeine's quite a, um, a new thing that I've introduced them into my diet and I do feel quite a boost after it. So I am being quite careful about the amount of matcha I put in at the moment because it is something that I'm introducing into my diet. So yeah, that's breakfast. Nothing hugely exciting, I'm afraid. I'm just gonna pop you on a vase. Um, just finished my Pilates workout. I haven't been running this week because at the beginning of the week, I felt a little bit of a pain in my knee and just thought rather than risk an injury, I'll leave it and uh, reintroduce some Pilates. I used to do Pilates quite a lot. Um, as I have said, in previous videos. I don't like yoga, but I do feel like sometimes it's beneficial for me to introduce kind of like low intensity exercise into my routine. However, that Pilates that I just did was by no means low intensity. It was only 20 minutes and I was shaking by the end of it. Um, today has been an extremely gray and dark and rainy day. So I'm in the mood for some major comfort food. I've just been looking through the One Pot Pan Planet book again, and I don't think you get much more comforting than a pasta bake. Am I right? I think this, I think all the recipes in this book are vegetarian. It does say a greener way to cook on the front. So I imagine they're all vegetarian or most of them are maybe plant-based. So this is gonna be packed with tomatoes, lots of, I think there's quite a lot of olives in this, lots of parsley, lots of fennel, lots of garlic. And then I'm gonna to top it off with loads of cheese and breadcrumbs so that it is extra crispy. Um, actually, do you know what would make this even more comforting is a side of garlic bread. I'm gonna check the freezer, fingers crossed I've got some. If not, it's just gonna be extra helpings of pasta, I think. I can't wait for this. I can't remember the last time I had pasta bake. smell a bit off when you're cooking them. It really puts me off, but it did taste very, very nice. I just think, because you sprinkle manchego on the top, and the smell of the manchego in the oven wasn't very nice, but it was great. I have cooked way too much though, so I will be eating pasta bake for my lunch most of next week, I imagine. Um, I'm probably gonna have a little bit more and then I'm going to do some reading. I'll talk a bit more about books tomorrow, perhaps, because I do have a few books that I've finished to talk about. And then I'm going to watch a bit of Married at First Sight Australia because I am absolutely hooked on that. I think it's season six or wh whichever one they've just start they've just showed in the UK. I know I'm a bit behind and it finished ages ago, um, but man. I am so sucked in by it. I get really sucked in by stuff like this and I know the editing of it is brilliant and they make it look like there's a lot more drama going on than there actually is, but I just love stuff like this. Um, so I've taken a little bit of a break from, uh, what was I watching, RuPaul, which I'm still loving, but I was watching about three or four episodes a night. Um, so yeah, I've just taken a little bit of a break and I'm now fully committed to maths. I can't believe there's 41 episodes though. Um, and I'm only on like episode 10, so I've still got a long way to go. So yes, that'll be my evening. I think we can all guess what day it is. 
I've just made my morning matcha. The sun is out, the sky is blue. It's feeling like it's gonna be a very good Friday. Um, I've got something quite exciting to show you. Well, I think it's exciting and some of you might. A long time ago, well, it wasn't that long ago, maybe a few months ago, some of you will remember that beautiful uh, Akari lamp that I got. It's that big paper lamp and the beautiful pamphlet that came with it. Well, look what just arrived back from the framers. That, sorry, the lighting is really quite harsh. I'm gonna draw the curtains so that, there we go. Um, yeah, it's here, look. Still got it wrapped up. I'm gonna unwrap it and figure out where to put it today. Weirdly, I think it might end up going in either the toilet or the bathroom because it's quite small and a lot of the wall spaces within the flat are huge. So I'm thinking maybe this would look quite nice in a smaller space. Um, but I'm gonna just unwrap it and have a play around with it. I also got this back as well. This is from Curated Copenhagen as well. Uh, the same place that the Hockney poster came from that I showed you all in the last vlog. You'll be pleased to know that Curated C Copenhagen, sorry, that feels like a bit of a tongue twister, are now shipping to the UK again. So um, they stopped for a while just due to Brexit, but they're back up and running, which is great because they have like possibly the best selection of art posters I've ever seen. And they update it really regularly and they've always got really cool Hockney. Uh, there's always really cool like Picasso and Matisse posters. Um, I really liked the blue on this. Um, so excited to have these two. I have got one more that's currently still at the framers, which is a, um, that I got a really nice pamphlet, kind of similar size to this, from the Lucian Freud exhibition at the, gosh, was it at the Royal Academy? Last, no, not last year, definitely not last year, maybe the year before. So I've had that framed, which I'm also equally excited about getting back. Look who's here. Hey, uh. Whose birthday is it tomorrow? Right. How old are you going to be? Old. Old. It's all right. You don't have to. Um... I don't want to disclose my age. Oh, we don't have to include last year's birthday. No. Everyone's just skipping last year's birthday, oh, okay. so, so you can. You? I'm yeah. thirty this year. <laughs> um, the weather is so good today, so we've decided to go out for lunch as a treat. And you've taken the day off, haven't you? Birthday weekend! Whoop whoop! Second birthday in lockdown. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But we're still going to make the most of it, aren't we? We're going to go out for lunch. We've got... got a nice dinner. We've got a nice dinner sorted and... You haven't decided what you want to do tomorrow. No, it depends on the weather. If it's like this, we can go out somewhere, can't we? Yeah. Fingers crossed it stays like this because I don't think my mental health can deal with another week of rain and grey. No, it's going to get nice next week. Yeah, yeah. Spring. So it feels like spring is here, but we all know that it can very quickly disappear again in the blink of an eye. Right, let's go.
gosh, vlogging makes the weeks go so quickly. I cannot believe that it's another week and another vlog done. So I'm gonna end this week's vlog. This week's very failed attempt at documenting what I've eaten in a week. Um, I was gonna call it what, uh, just like what I eat in a week, but I don't think I can use that term because that was really hard documenting what you eat because you kind of have to remember to film it each week. I'm just gonna turn the exposure up on this. Um, so maybe the title of this vlog will be Some Things I Ate in a Week. I don't know. So I'm gonna talk books because I've finished three books recently, which I would like to talk about. Bear with me, I've just got to get. Oh. So, um, kind of went out, like had a bit of a uh, reading lull, but I feel like I'm back on the wagon. Um, so I finished reading Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. This book I absolutely loved. This, I'm hugely into kind of like psychological thrillers and that kind of thing, but I also love a sort of family saga. I like books that tell a very long story of someone's life over long periods of time. So last summer I read, um, why can I not remember? Oh, Pachinko. One of my favourite books, still one of my favourite books. I think I might reread it this year because I loved it so much and I still think about it very often and I'm often thinking I want to find more books like that. And after I spoke about Pachinko, someone said to read this and it's been on my to read list for so, so long. So I decided now is finally the time to read it and I absolutely loved it. It's the kind of story that I just didn't want it to end because I just wanted to continue the story. I wanted to know what happened to everyone. And I think that's what I love about family sagas and novels of this kind of storytelling is I just want to keep going. I want to know what happens until, you know, the characters die. I want to know then what happens to the characters' children and the grandchildren. And that's what I got like with Pachinko and that's certainly what I got like with this. Um, it, there's a lot going on in the book. There's a lot to unpack but I don't mean that in a negative sense whatsoever. There's just a lot going on. Um, and I think it's a very, I think it's an important book whenever, but currently, right now, I think it's a very, very good book to read. So I recommend that massively. Um, a few people did actually reply because I spoke about it on Instagram and lots of people, not lots of people, a few people said that they struggled with it and didn't understand the hype. And I think it might depend on the sort of storytelling that you're into, but I love this kind of storytelling. After Americana, I then read Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. So Never Let Me Go, also by the same author, is one of my favourite books. It has a lot of uh, sort of cre creepy dystopian vibes to it. I'd say it borderline science fiction. It really questions your existence as a human being and um, it's quite scary, I would say. I really, really enjoyed it. It's one of my favourite books, like I said. So I was very excited about Clara and the Sun because this kind of explores similar themes. So it's essentially about the relationship between a girl called Josie and her artificial friend, Clara. Artificial friend being an artificial robot. The story is told from Clara's point of view. So the narration is quite childlike. It does feel quite emotionless and I guess simple, but she's a robot. So I think it is true to how a robot, I guess, would tell a story. For me, I found this book to be um, quite thought provoking in the way it made me question where humanity ends and technology starts. I feel like this explores what it means to be uh, human and what it means to love. Um, very, very interesting book. I really enjoyed it. Midway through, um, I listened to the Adam Buxton podcast with Kazo Ishiguro, which is really, really interesting and actually made me uh, 
understand this book on another level. It didn't give away any spoilers, by the way, just in case you're thinking about listening to it. You can listen to it having not read any of Kazuo's work. You can listen to it midway through Clara and the Sun. It doesn't give anyway, anyway, it doesn't give away any spoilers, but it slightly touches on some of the themes within this book, and I found that quite helpful when reading the book. And the third book that I have read this month is Sisters by Daisy Johnson. I haven't technically finished this book, I've got about 30 to 40 pages to go, so it will be finished by the end of the day, which is why I wanted to include it in this little roundup. So Sisters is the story of two sisters who have to move to a different part of the country with their mum because of a terrible event that happens. This event is alluded to throughout the whole story. I don't know what the event is yet. I'm imagining there's going to be some sort of big reveal or big twist in the next uh, 30 to 40 pages, but I've got no clue why they've had to move. And the story is, uh, it is the story of their very intense and scary relationship. Um, I thought this book was going to be quite a, like a typical sort of psychological thriller. Um, I thought it was going to be a story about a haunted house, but actually it's something completely different. Um, and I have to say I'm not enjoying it. And I think that is because of the way it's written. It's very short, it's very sharp, it feels quite juttery. Um, but because it's quite short, I've decided to persevere with it. And I want to know what happens at the end. I want to know what this event is that happened to the sisters that's made them, like, has forced them to move house. So that's the only reason why I've continued reading it. Um, and I think I need to stop reading so many reviews on Goodreads before picking up a book because it skews my expectations of a book. Um, and I do find I will read books that feel quite hyped up and I feel a little bit let down by them or I ex I'm expecting something and then I get a completely different story. I know reading reviews is helpful, but in some cases it really can sort of like hinder my enjoyment of a book. Um, because sometimes I'll read, like I'll read loads of negative reviews and then I'll just be like, well, I'm not reading that book. I think I need to just read books based on the blurb and whether I like the sound of it. Um, but I know it is quite helpful when you, I don't know, say like if you follow someone you, and you know their taste in books, like for example, if you follow me and you like the recommendations that I recommend, maybe if I was to say, oh, I don't like a book, it would be helpful because you're like, oh, well, I quite like book, the books that Brittany reads, so I probably won't like that book. But then again, I'm like, I don't know, I feel really bad dwelling on a book that I'm not enjoying and I don't want to say this book is awful because it's not an awful book, it's just not a book. It's just not my kind of book. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that because I'm rambling now. Um, so yeah, there, there's three books I have read this month. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there because um, I don't really have much to share and it is Sunday um, and I need to get this vlog finished and uploaded for you all. Um, I hope you enjoyed this week's weird mishmash of me trying to show you what I've been eating um, and other bits in between. Um, maybe that's what I'll call it. What I've been eating and other bits in between. Maybe that could be quite a good title for it. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one.